Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. Today we will learn about the top 10 interview questions and answers on HTML5. If you are applying as a UI designer or UX, even for a front-end engineering role, you are expected to learn and know about HTML5. So I am bringing you top 10 questions which are frequently asked in interviews. This research has been done based on various companies that we have spoken to, to the technical recruiters, and I hope this will be useful to you. If you like my tutorial, if you like this video, please like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with top 10 interview questions on HTML5. So these are the top 10 most asked HTML5 interview questions. We will do some hands-on examples as well. And as always, you can ask me your queries and doubts in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. All right, so the first question is, what are the new features in HTML5? Please explain. So HTML5 brings in semantic structure to web applications. There are several new semantic tags like header, nav, main, article, all these tags will help in creating a systematic semantic web applications. There is improved support for embedding graphics, audio, video content via new tags, which are canvas, audio, and video. There are a lot of extensions of JavaScript APIs like geolocation, drag and drop for storing and caching as well. In HTML5, there is a concept of web workers which got introduced and that is a powerful way to have a progressive web application. There are new controls like validation of date, time, email, URL and search. So these are all the features that you should talk about whenever the question comes about the new features in HTML5. The next question is, what are web workers? This is one of the most frequently asked questions, so go through it well. So web workers bring multi-threading to JavaScript. A web worker is nothing but a script that runs in the background, usually a threaded one, without which uh, the page need not to wait for certain activity to complete. The user can still continue to interact with the page while the web worker runs in the background. So this, they will ask you for an example of web worker. So think of it like uh, an application or a notification engine that you're developing, which needs to listen to incoming messages all the time. So you can give one example of that as your web worker implementation in your projects. The next question is, how do you define character set in HTML pages? So in HTML5, the encoding used can be indicated with the character set attribute. So we will implement this as part of our meta tags in our HTML's documents head section. So for example, you will write meta character set equal to UTF-8. There are other things that can go with meta tags like keywords, description, author. So make sure you check out those as well. <coughs> the next is, can you explain the HTML semantic elements? Now, like I said, HTML5 brings in a systematic structure to the web applications. The, we have a header tag, which is used to mainly contain the introductory or navigational information. Or it can also be just purely based on the head section of that section or that page. There is article, which is again a self-composed DIV or independent logical section where you can hold some meaningful data related to that page. Then you have section, like you can create multiple sections in the page. That would be multiple sections. So usually article would be one if you are building a content management system or CMS. Finally, you will have footer where you can have all your information appearing at the end of the application. Uh, mostly the SEO links, copyright information, author information, etc. Now, the question sometimes tricky is, can a page has multiple header elements and what about footer? So yes, the answer is yes, it can have multiple header and multiple footer sections. 
Now this can be if you use any modern CSS framework like Bootstrap or Material, you would see that there are cards and each card can have its own header and footer section. So to answer, yes. Uh, there's only one body tag, but there can be multiple header and footer tags based on the section or the uh, page layout that you're looking at. So then the question usually comes like, how do you implement a video tag? So you, you use the video tag with an attribute source, SRC, and then you'll give the URL of the, the video that is MP4 or whatever that um, URL of that is you can specify the width and height and specify the controls that it should have. So that's the basic implementation of video tag. Now this is yet another very very important question uh, HTML5 web storage. So they'll ask they want they are interested in knowing if you have used any storage mechanism in your applications. So with HTML5 we can store data locally within users browser. So Remember that before HTML5, we used to do all of this using cookies. But now we have web storage, which is more secure, faster, can hold the server request, session data. So the data is stored in name and value pairs, which is basically, again, key value pair combination that you can store. And just remember, this is another question that is asked. What is the storage limit in your browser? So that's 5 MB. Remember that and it is never transferred to the server. It always holds good in your browser. If you clear the browser history and cache, this is gone. Now the next follow-up question usually comes like, explain in detail about local storage and session storage. The difference between local storage and session storage involves the lifetime and scope of the storage, which means data stored with local storage is permanent. It does not expire and remains on the, the user's computer until a web app deletes it. <coughs> session storage has a lifetime of just that session. So when you close the window or the tab, the data is deleted because it's temporarily stored for that session. <coughs> Both forms of storage are scoped to the document origin. So the documents with different origins will share the different, will share the same object but will have different origins. Session uh, storage is scoped on a per window basis. So if a user has two browser tabs displaying documents from same origin, those two tabs have separate session storage. The scripts running in one tab cannot read or overwrite other tabs data. So go through this. This is yet another important question that is usually asked in interviews. Now this is simpler one. What is the difference between span and DIV? So DIV takes the entire line as the width, whereas span will only take the content width of the content. Span is used whenever we need our elements to be shown in a single line, one after another, that's next to each other. But DIV, it will always bring it to next line. Explain geolocation API in HTML5. So HTML5 geolocation API let users share their physical location with chosen websites. So if you see, you can share your latitude, longitude locations using geolocation API, mostly used if you are dealing with any location-based services, like identifying Google Maps, Uber, or any shopping like nearby, etc. So that's where a geolocation API comes very handy. You can create using navigator object, so navigator object has the details of navigator.geolocation. This is how you can grab any browser, any systems location by sharing the latitude and longitude. All right, so that brings us to the uh, section, end of this section. I hope these 10 will give you good confidence to answer in your interviews. I'll bring you more. If you like this video, just comment and tell me what else you want to learn, I will share those videos. In the coming tutorials, I will implement some of these in detail um, in showing you code walkthrough. But these are the top 10 questions you should definitely practice before going to the interviews. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel and keep supporting me. Thank you so much.